Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Taffel and today we are doing another episode of UFDPM's Faculty Talks. Today we have Dr. Sandy Wilson as our guest. So Dr. Wilson, can you start off today by introducing yourself? Well, sure. Thank you, Sarah. I'm so glad to be here to be able to do this. I uh, am a professor in environmental horticulture based in Gainesville. And I've been in that position for almost 20 years. I started out at the Fort Pierce Research and Education Center and moved to Gainesville about six years ago. And um, that position is a teaching and research position. And my um, primary area of expertise is in native plant propagation and production, and um, also ornamental invasive plants. So could you tell us a little bit more about those past experiences and why did you choose that field? Well, I started out, um, I started out majoring in animal science. I wanted to be a veterinarian and uh, I worked at a veterinarian for many years and worked on the university's farm, with farm animals. And, um, and along the way, I got a job at the greenhouse there and all of the professors would come in and say, you should take my class in plant botany and my propagation and all of these other awesome classes and I did and then it just clicked like and I really I really knew that that's what I wanted to uh, major in that's what I wanted to study in and that's what I wanted to pursue as a career so that's kind of how I chose the field of um, horticulture and um, regarding my actual discipline I started receiving grant funding in the area of invasive ornamentals because it's a huge problem in Florida. And along the way, I it just came naturally for me to start thinking about how we could use native plants that, you know, prior to us even being here, that are tolerant of our extreme weather patterns and all the different conditions that Florida has to offer. And, um, and just use those more in the landscapes. And so the two kind of parallel each other with both research and teaching. So what is your involvement with the DPM program? I love the DPM program. I, after I moved to Gainesville, I started to become involved with it and um, started to connect with Dr. Hodges. And um, basically she, I had had some of their students taking my classes. So I was familiar with the program, but she called me one day and said, I have a student that um, that seems to be ideally suited for a master's degree with a thesis in environmental horticulture, if you have an opening in your lab. And um, and then we just um, we combined our efforts. And uh, that was the first student that got her um, master's degree in environmental horticulture and now is working on her DPM program. So it was all, um, I can accredit it all to Dr. Hodge's great ability to uh, recruit students and to identify talent in fields like environmental horticulture. So do you teach any courses that are needed for the DPM exam? So I teach classes um, so let's see, I, I teach classes that are certainly helpful for the exam. Um, the classes that I teach are Florida Native Landscaping. So that covers a lot of plant identification, propagation, production, and use. I teach a class in annual perennial gardening that is more based on uh, bedding plants and landscape design, and certainly a lot of the DPM um, certifications like pathogens, insect, disease management, weed management, all of that is entailed into the course. And then I teach a class on um, plant propagation, and that's actually a core class for our plant science undergraduate curriculum. And all three of those classes are dual listed at the graduate level. And I know you just talked about that student that was able to work in your lab. So right now, are there any opportunities to work with you or maybe in the future? Yeah, um, I rely on Amanda for that. She's able to kind of scout out those students. In fact, there's a new student that's starting a meeting with her actually next week. And um, 
And so as positions, there's always, it's a, it's a revolving door. Students graduate and then new students come in. And so there's, there's always opportunity to, uh, for student involvement in the various different research programs I have. So with that, what, uh, what examples do you have of like what kind of work uh, students can expect to be doing? So the, um, the students that I have had are all on assistantship. And with that assistantship, then they uh, conduct the research that's usually related to their thesis project. And um, so it kind of depends on the interests of the student because um, my person, I'm always open to learning new things. Uh, a good example of that is a current student who just graduated with her thesis and is now finishing the DPM program. She has two more years to go. She, um, her project was on pollinator plants, so that was very related to entomology. And, um, and then I was very interested in the, um, in using native plants and to be able to show the value of nectar and also pollen. And, um, and then to conduct the variety trials of different types of ornamentals for that study. But um, so that was kind of her, her thesis. But in addition to that, she worked on a lot of other little smaller projects that gave her experience in presenting nationally and um, writing peer reviewed um, publications and things like that. So she worked on a B mobile application that we just launched that allows students or anyone from their handheld device to be able to look up pollinator friendly plants, learn how to identify them, learn how to identify the different bees, and um, and then put, a, put those components together into a landscape design. So that's kind of a couple different examples of the different projects students will do, but Another project is um, I have a student and her project is looking at a ornamental invasive. It's called Nandina domestica. And um, there's many different cultivars of it out in the trade. And so um, her project is to evaluate all those cultivars and determine whether or not they're also at risk as the wild type species is. And um, most of the projects involve some component of propagation um, they usually involve some laboratory work so students can feel confident in that area, some greenhouse work, and, um, and also some field work. And I, I found that uh, students that have, have a, a comfort in those three areas uh, graduate feeling um, very strong and um, knowledgeable in a lot of different troubleshooting that they'll encounter later on in the DPN program. Well, that seems like a really good variety for students. So do you have any additional information you'd like to share about the DPM program or perhaps advice for new students? I'll share that in my experience, the students that are getting their master's degree with a thesis and also their DPM are graduating with um, a much greater competitive advantage in the job market because they're graduating with a skill set in scientific writing in um, problem solving with um, research-based problem solving and also uh, statistical analysis of results and also um, oral presentations and um, so that you know it it's baby steps and gradually through the course of their degree uh, i work with them in in, in those um, elements and um, and then that carries them through through their dpn and also their future career so i think that the combination of the two is very, can be very rewarding at the end, but if you talk to the students, it can be very challenging also because um, most DPM students are just, you know, trying to stay above water, just taking the rigorous classes and uh, studying for their exams and everything. And so if you put that on top of a rigorous research project, and um, writing up publications and presenting those there it doesn't leave much time in the day <laughs> to do other things but um, but remarkably the students that i've had are also very involved in both the dpm clubs 
and also the environmental horticulture clubs. So they have a, a strong presence in um, different community services and university services like that too, that helps to build their character and gives them leadership opportunities like that. Well, thank you very much for sharing all this great information. And thank you to our audience for watching another episode. So stay tuned for more.